Here we have a gate to hold back some water in a like a dam. This is called a tainter gate. It's basically a section of a cylinder. You can see kind of a cylindrical section here. And we're given that the radius is 20 meters and the gate width in and out of the page is 35 meters. So that's in and out of the page there. And we're holding back water at a depth H, which is right in line with the center of the gate here. So you can see a, a real picture of one over here. You can see kind of the cylindrical shape, the hinge over here. And we're asked to find the force components, magnitude and line of action of the water that the water exerts on the gate. So basically find what the resultant force is, uh, the force components, you know, F sub X, F sub Y, and uh, where those forces act, the center of pressure essentially. So let's draw a picture here to put a coordinate system and such on it. So the, let me just redraw it over here. Here's our gate. It's part of a cylinder, right? There's the, the center. Here's where the water is. Uh, we're gonna call this the X direction. We're gonna call that the Y direction. And we're gonna go out to some point here. That's the radius R. Call that angle there theta. And again, this is the free surface right over here. So out to that point on the gate where I just drew R, we'll call that distance Y, because it's you know, depth Y from the free surface. And the little bit of area that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the pressure force over this little bit of area right there with this normal vector. I'm gonna just call the normal vector for the moment E sub R hat. That's the normal vector in the radial direction. Okay, so it's just pointing out radially. And that little area there, call it dA, is going to be r times d theta. So that's the little bit of area kind of in the circumferential direction, times w, which is the distance in and out of the page. And if we want to make that a vector, that'll be pointing in the er hat direction. Okay. And to get the... Uh, the maximum angle, let me, let me draw it up here. If I want to get the maximum angle, let's call it theta sub m. You can look from the geometry here that there's r and then the vertical distance is h, so it's kind of like right here is h. So the sine of theta m is h over r. We're going to make use of that in just a little bit because we're going to, we're going to integrate over a range of angles. Okay, so let's go ahead and just write down what the pressure force is on that little bit of area. A little bit of pressure force. That's going to be the pressure at that location. Let me just write it as P times minus dA. Okay, and our pressure at this location right here is just going to be rho G times Y, because Y is the depth down to that point. So density of water times G times Y. The a little bit of area we already said was r d theta times w times e r hat. So that gives us our little bit of pressure force. So if we want the total pressure force, we're going to integrate that as theta goes from zero, which would put us right at the free surface right here, down to theta maximum, theta m, that's the at the very bottom. and then we're gonna integrate all those little bits of pressure force. So if I substitute in, we can have the rho g y times minus r d theta w e r hat. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna to do to simplify this is I'm gonna pull the constants outside the integral. I'm gonna pull the rho g r and w outside the, the integral. That just makes life a little bit easier. I'll also pull the negative sign outside. I'm leaving the er hat inside the integral for the moment because, oh, and I forgot there's a d theta in there. Let me fix that. I'm leaving the er hat on the inside of the integral because the, the radial unit vector changes as the angle theta changes, right? It's actually changing orientation uh, in the x and y directions. So 
I'm going to have to fix that. The other thing is I've got a y here and a theta, so I've got some mixed coordinates. So I need to I need to kind of clean that up. There are just too many different coordinates going on here. So let me switch everything into the theta coordinate system. So first of all, um, let's write let's write y in terms of theta. So you'll see here y is this distance. Here's theta, here's r. So if you look at that for a moment, you'll get that y is equal to r sine theta. That just comes from this, this triangle right here. There's the r, y, and then the angle theta. So we can write that down. Oops. So r sine theta. You know, and I just realized I wrote a W twice. Let me get rid of that W there. Okay, so we have the Y taken care of. Now let me fix the the unit vector E, e sub R, the radial unit vector. I'm going to, since I want the force in the X and Y direction, let me just rewrite that in terms of I hat and J hat. So I'll do that right here. So here's our our area. What I'm doing is I'm zooming in on this little area here. I'm just redrawing it here. Here's our ER hat. And I'm going to break that up into components. So here is the angle theta. So ER hat, and this, this is my I hat direction. That's my J hat direction. So ER hat will be a cosine theta I hat plus sine theta J hat. Okay, so let me write that down as well sine theta i hat plus sine theta j hat. And then there's our d theta. So now we have everything in terms of theta so that we can evaluate the integral. It's important when you evaluate integrals to make sure you get the all the dependencies on the thing that you're integrating. All right, you see there's another r here. I can pull that outside as well. So let's do that. And then I'll expand out the integral. So I have a sine theta cosine theta in the i hat direction, and then I have a sine squared theta in the j hat direction. So I can go ahead and integrate both of those. The first one's actually pretty easy to integrate. That's just going to be, let me write it out. That first one is just going to be uh, a one half sine squared theta. So we're going to that one, that one's pretty straightforward. That's this this term right here, right? One half sine squared theta. When you take the derivative, the twos cancel out, and you get a sine theta cosine theta. Integrating sine squared theta is tougher. Easiest thing to do there is just to look it up on the internet. Just use an integral table, look that up. Something like Wolfram Alpha, something like that. Um, that's no problem. You you have that resource. You can just go ahead and use it. That'll come out to be a one half. Um, actually, what I'll do is, well, yeah, let me just write it. It'll be a one-half theta minus one-fourth sine of two theta. Again, evaluated from zero to theta m. So that's what that, and there's a j hat there, by the way. So there's that term. All right, well, we can then evaluate the limits of the integration. A sine of zero is just zero, and that's true over here as well. So what we're left with, uh, and uh, is we're going to have a minus rho g r squared times w, one half sine squared theta m i hat plus one half. So let me do it this way. One half theta m minus one fourth sine two theta m. This one is all times j hat, and then we have some curly brackets. So that's our force acting on the gate. We can simplify that actually a little bit further because we know what theta m is, right? We figured that out uh, somewhere up here, right? We have sine that theta m is equal to h over r. So you can see here, this is sine squared of theta m. So that'll be h over r squared. So let's write that out. So f is equal, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write these separately. This is the first one, this is 
going to be a one half, actually a minus one half rho g. I mentioned before this is going to be a one half h over r squared, right? So that you can see this r squared here will cancel out with that r squared. So you're going to be left with h squared times w times i hat. So that's the force acting in the x direction. We could have actually figured that out pretty easily because uh, if you looked at one of the previous examples, the horizontal component of the force acting on that gate will just be the horizontal, the, the pressure force acting on the projected area. Right, the projected area would look like this area, kind of going here. So it's just, just the height h, and the pressure acting on that projected area would look like that. That'll just, the, the resultant force of that situation is just a one-half rho g h squared times w, which is exactly what we get here. So it's the horizontal components, just the net pressure force acting on the projected area. Now this other term gets a little messier because you're going to have an arc sign in here and it, it's just a little bit messier. So I'm going to leave that one just as is. So this will be a minus, I can still pull a one-half out, So be theta m minus one half sine of two theta m. That's in the j hat direction. So that's our pressure force acting in the vertical direction on the gate. So one other thing I'll point out is uh, we have a minus i hat here, which means that the force is pushing. So remember, our x positive x direction is pointing to the right. So our net pressure force is pushing to the left on the gate. And our positive y is pointing downwards. So a negative y force means it's pushing upwards. So you'll notice that we have a negative j hat there. So, it's, so the pressure force acting on the gate is pushing to the left and upwards on it. So we'll just go ahead and leave the force expression like that. That gives us our x and y components. We can go ahead and plug in the numbers we're given. So we're told that we're dealing with water. So that's 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. We're told that the width of the gate was 35 meters. And the height, h, was 10 meters. And the radius was 20 meters. So we're given all of that information. So from here, you can get that the force in the x direction comes out to be minus 17.2 meganewtons. And the force in the y direction comes out to be minus 6.22 meganewtons. And if you find the resultant force of that, so just the magnitude, that'll of course be fx squared plus fy squared, I'll take the square root of it. That comes out to be something like 18.3 meganewtons. So that's our resultant force, here's our x and y components. All I've done there is just plug these numbers into the equation up in here to figure all that out. Um, keeping in mind, I should probably note here that, that sine of theta m is h over r. We figured that out from the geometry up above. Okay, uh, so that gives us our some of uh, what we've been asked to find. The only other thing we were asked to find really is the line of action, which is really the center of pressure. So if you want to find the angle at which this force is acting, we just take uh, the tangent of Fy over Fx, or the inverse tangent of that, right? So I'll write this as the tangent of the, of the angle at which the, these forces act. That'll be tangent, I'll call it sub CP for center of pressure, that's just Fy over Fx. So that'll come out to give us theta CP is 19.9 degrees. What I mean by that is, let me redraw the picture here. Here's our gate. Here's the free surface. There's depth H. If we come down some angle here, theta CP, that's where we'll have our x force. Try to draw that horizontally. So there's our fx. Here's our fy. 
and that force um, will pass through the center of the gate. Remember that the pressure force is always normal to the surface, right? It's always pushing normal. If I, if I just draw some arbitrary part of the surface, the pressure force is always going to act inward and normal to that surface, right? So that pressure force will always will always pass through the center of the gate here. So we just come down this angle of almost 20 degrees, and that's where our center of pressure is. That's why I put theta CP, because that's where our center of pressure is located. So our line of action actually will be right through here. And then our net pressure force, or resultant force, is this value. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense to you. So just to kind of recap what we did in this problem to find the forces, as we did our integration approach, we looked at a small area, wrote down what the area of that was, as well as the vector. Then we found a little bit of pressure force on that small area, pressure times minus dA. Pressure is just rho gy, just the this is the gauge pressure, times minus the area, which we just wrote down. The next thing that we did is we just had to, because we have some mixed coordinate systems here, we have a y and a theta and an er hat, is I just put everything in a common coordinate system. This is probably where most of the trouble lies. It's just more of the mathematics of it. I just converted the y to an r sine theta from the geometry. I converted the er hat to cosine theta i hat plus sine theta hat just again from the geometry. And then I also did the limits of integration from zero to theta m. Theta m is the maximum depth, which again, you get from the geometry. And then at this point, it's just a matter of integration, which is what the next set of steps are. And then you end up with this expression finally, where you have the x component and the y component. We plugged in the numbers found the numerical values for those as well as the resultant force and then if you wanted the angle at which that acts that's just kind of your typical finding the angle of your resultant force just taking fy over fx tangent of that it's kind of this picture here there's fx there's fy and you're trying to find the resultant force there's the angle so tangent of theta is fy over fx. So that's where that came from. So that's this expression, and that gives us our angle that it's acting at, so that's this angle right here. Okay, hopefully all that makes sense. The, the math might be a little bit tricky there, but uh, hopefully the concepts make sense. So we'll end it there.